thank you once again, Ben, for the introduction. Appreciate that. Uh, we have been uh, seeing about uh, the investment opportunities in nickel industries and uh, the all resources that we have abandoned nickel. So I think uh, the topic that I want to discuss is also uh, important, uh, how we can uh, make a clean and efficient way to make battery grade nickel in Indonesia. So uh, in these opportunities, uh, we've been collaborating with advisor uh, who has worked over 20 years in the mining industries. I think this, uh, the name is very familiar with us, Mr. Stephen Brown. And I would like to stop here. As we know, Indonesia uh, has abandoned nickel resources, uh, would become the world's leader in nickel and the future contender for being leader force in the EV battery industries. But again, it is not enough if uh, we believe that uh, electric vehicle will become the green energy solution for the future. I think uh, we must be careful of the long-term sustainability of our activities because uh, such uh, we have to ensuring all of the upstream to the downstream activities are followed uh, with the ESG compliance. And I would like to emphasize uh, the three main long-term risks. And this is uh, that we gonna, will be uh, our main topic discussion. And the first one is conservation of resources that already previously mentioned by uh, Bu Medi. Uh, we have very fast uh, limonite ore that has yet to be utilized. And the second one is uh, waste disposal is also uh, become a key concern for many nickel consumer who produce batteries. And the third one lastly is about carbon emission uh, consumers are also concerned about the carbon footprint of nickel. And the latter right, our profile consists of limonite and saprolite. As we can see on the screen that currently uh, Indonesia only produce NPI and made from saprolite and it left about 80% uh, of limonite or as yet to be utilized. And uh, this also it's our homework and fast limonite resources is not yet to be utilized. And what we can see in the screen, it's about the low grade laterite ore is not extracted optimally. As we can see uh, of the total of uh, 4.5 billion of probable and prof or resources in uh, spread in the Sulawesi and Maluku. And this is uh, what become the one of the big concern of the nickel industries and for every respective stakeholder that every year we produce 20 to 22 million of tons where 60% comes from the nickel industries. So as we know, uh, nowadays, uh, Indonesia has several HPAL project in development. This project will produce uh, a tailing waste, which is uh, it's become a controversial issues. There are three potential methods of tailing disposal. Uh, one, maybe one of the feasible way is using deep sea tailing, but again, there's uh, several downsides using this uh, tailing management. And the newest one is dry stacking tailing. It's also have several downsides, uh, like costly and other several concerns that we have to think about. And also again about carbon footprint, the current nickel extraction technology contributes so many carbon gas emission. This also become a big concern because uh, clearly if we makers would prefer to buy the nickel from plants that have lower carbon emission. So I think uh, everyone is already know about the rise of ESG concern. I will uh, make it fast. So ESG has become important every day and uh, it's become a trending topic. Uh, the work of ESG, this 
uh, what we can see here, this chart shows how ESG has grown in importance over the years, and especially since last year where the CFO, CFO mentioning ESG repeatedly during earnings call. So again, I would like to emphasize these three long-term main risks. And uh, if the makers may be tempted to buy more nickel from other place, I think this is a big concern for us, which will jeopardize Indonesia's market share. And what we can do to overcome this risk. And for the solution, uh, at all once, I would like to introduce tall technology. Uh, this is technology that developed from uh, our company, Hydrotech Metal Indonesia, subsidiary of Trinitan Group. This technology is able to extract the nickel and cobalt from the wide range of laterite ore, from uh, limonite ore to the saprolite. Let me move into the next slide. It's a glance about uh, our company. We've been established since 1970, and at the moment we already have three public listed companies, and we focusing in green energy. Uh, I might, I might want, do not want to take a dive look uh, to explain this process, but what we can see here, uh, we have wide range limonite R as an input and the sulfuric acid as a chemical. And uh, we can see the product, our product, our main product is MHP, MHP mixed hydroxide precipitate. We also have uh, ferrous and, uh, and aluminum. Uh, what, but uh, the interesting part is uh, instead of we manage our tailing, but uh, we uh, able to uh, reproduce our uh, waste and disposal into byproduct. Uh, I will talk about this further. So uh, we got the chance, uh, we got invited by the Minister of Maritime and Investment that uh, we do appreciate for uh, this time. And uh, the Ministry of uh, Luhut Bin Sarpanjaitan, uh, after several previous meeting with uh, Pak Seto and team, uh, we got invited and uh, the, the response is very positive and we do appreciate that the government is in the effort to uh, support us in developing our technology. So uh, this is uh, the trade wide range of lead rate deposit with good extraction rate. This is a uh, show about our technology that able to extract battery grade nickel from wide range lead rate. So what we can see here, uh, we understand the most of nickel mining in Indonesia are uh, small and medium scale that spread mostly in Sulawesi in total of al almost 300 concession uh, previously as uh, Bumedi mentioned. And uh, I think we do have initiate to uh, create a modular system capacity that's suitable for Indonesia's mining concession. Uh, with the several competitive advantages uh, with this technology, like a shorter development and ramp up time at the moment we are in the process of engineering design. So uh, I think the next process would be shortened. So with flexible output, uh, we believe that stall are suitable for nickel mining condition in Indonesia. Uh, because the other benefit uh, using stall technology is uh, low capex and gas costs. Uh, we believe our modular system would be the ideal for nickel mining condition in Indonesia. And uh, we do also encourage for every miners to, to build their own stall smelters uh, close to the mine mouth. And uh, this is our solution for uh, three mine long term is that we like to answer the conservation of resources uh, limonite because we will be able to take advantage of the abundant availability of Indonesia's limonite ore. And the next question is uh, about the waste disposal and carbon emission. At all once, uh, we would like also to introduce our uh, Green Plus program 
this program is derived from the Hydrotech Metal Indonesia related to ESG development. And in order to develop uh, this program, we has guidelines uh, based on the national policies and also from the international regulation using the global reporting initiative. And also uh, in developing this system, we also uh, in collaboration with independent ESG consultant named Miracle. And uh, we focusing into three highlight impact issues to addressing ESG implementation, uh, reducing carbon emission, uh, zero waste, and providing highly reliable transparency information. So uh, this is uh, STAL technology, our technology and uh, our main product of MHP. MHP, uh, as we know, that contain uh, 30 up to 40% of nickel. And this is uh, what I said, this is what the, the, the most important is we will be able to convert all the residues and tiling into the byproduct, uh, not like other uh, incumbent processing. We're going to convert the ferrous and aluminum into the byproduct uh, for the iron ore that, uh, that can be used for the stainless steel. So uh, we also have the net zero waste target. If we look into the chemical compound of the laterite ore that consists also ferrous aluminum, uh, manganese and magnesium and scandium that most likely become the residue in uh, other technology processes. As we can see on the screen, uh, that iron ore that can be utilized for stainless steel product and bricks and uh, scandium will become uh, byproduct through the solvent extraction process and next to purification process for HPA. So that is uh, our solution to overcome the waste disposal. This one is very interesting and uh, so many parties has been appreciated into this program and endeavor to look further about the progress. And next into the carbon emission. So what we can see here, the production of carbon is emission estimated from each process of stall technology where the total number is 17 kilogram of carbon dioxide per kilogram nickel. And uh, based on the calculation, stall in compare with other technology has uh, lower emission and it could be reduced even more by use the renewable energy such solar power, hydro power, and so on. And that's uh, our solution uh, in order to reduce the carbon emission. Uh, again, we are not working alone. We are supported by the expertise in this field who also uh, act as environmentalists and therefore uh, we believe and we hope we can make a balancing between our business and the global environment. So Sorry, this is... Uh, uh, we have uh, two minutes. All right, Ben. Thank you. So about transparency, I will make it uh, faster. This is uh, also quite interesting that uh, is we are developing at the moment is collaboration between our expertise and the uh, R&D team and uh, one of the top universities in Indonesia in Bandung, uh, we really understand that the software development becomes the backbone and critical success factor for this program. So uh, we using the CIM that we can see the computer integrated manufacturing will be installed in every equipment for line in order to capture all of that requirement such as an input output of production quantity speed per activities residue and emission produced uh, where, you know, where all of those information stored to the cloud and managed by the server in the office. This uh, strictly independent system means a user will very unlikely be able to make change to the data, but also so all of the information will be sent to the respective stakeholder accurately and timely manner. So uh, the digitalized monitoring system will be installed at any point required 
as we can see on the screen, the blue one is the waste and emission automatic sensor, and the operation would be autonomous to provide information of gas emission, liquid, and solid effluent. So I think that's all. This is our conclusion. As our conclusion, uh, the three main long-term risks, the conservation of limonite or waste disposal and uh, carbon emission are the things that we should be managed uh, with proper sustainability plan and STAL technology is one of the solution to overcome this problem. Uh, in order to make it happen, we initiate the Green Plus program in collaboration with uh, the environmentalists and expertise uh, related in this field particularly in ESG and also research institution to build the autonomous manufacturing cloud-based system. This, uh, in order to strengthen our position as the green technology provider for nickel industry. I think that's all uh, my presentation. Thank you.